Guys, this thing is huge. So check it out, guys. We've got a regulated DC output, a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter, state of charge meter, and the solar charge controller input. So you now have an Anderson connector and then their typical connector that they use for most of their solar panels. And up close, it looks like all the other models. So nothing very new on the outside. But look at how big this thing is. This is huge. So we've got the 290 watt hour, which is the same size as their 240 watt hour. And look how big this thing is, especially from the side. Like this thing is massive. But overall, everything looks the same. It's literally just a bigger version of this. So this has an MPPT, but the max input voltage is 30 volts. So let's hook up a power supply and see how much power we can pump into this thing. So now we have 30 volts and we're gonna plug it in and I hope nothing blows up. And this mimics a solar panel, by the way. So the manual states that it can have a max input of 24 volts at 8.3 amps. So the max I'm getting is 176 watts. So whether you put 200 or 300 watts of panels, this is the maximum that you'll get for the input. And it says on the manual that it can handle up to 8.3 amps. But right now we're at 7 amps, but that's because we're at a higher voltage. If I decrease this, the amps will go up. So let me show you. Wow, guys, the amps are not going up. The max I can pull is 7 amps. I think it might be for both of the inputs combined. So power supply number 2 and second input, let's see what happens. Is only 8. Look at that, it switched over to the other input. So you can only do one input at a time. But both inputs push about the same amount of current. They're only off by 0.1, and it could just be the accuracy of these power supplies. Let's see what voltage is required for it to be charging. Oh, right there. So 17 volts, which is the working voltage of a 12 volt panel. That's where it substantially decreases. So I would recommend getting a solar panel with like a voltage open circuit of 22 volts if you want to charge this quickly. See, check it out, guys. The moment we go below 17, it drops to 3 and then 2 amps. So make sure that you have a higher voltage 12 volt panel for sure. So let's take the max charge rate in watts and divide it by the watt hour capacity and we get 5.6 hours. That's the fastest that you can charge the Jackery with solar power with this input. Now let's add their AC charger and see how fast it charges. It says it can push 8 amps at 24 volts. So maybe we can get 8 amps this time. We're only getting 163 watts. That's a bummer, so I guess it's faster to charge it with solar. So yeah, I don't think this is pushing 8 amps at all. That's a bummer. So these little power supplies were cranking out more power than their dedicated AC charger. So yeah, solar is preferable in this instance. What I'm thinking is that this has to be at an extremely low state of charge, and then all of these will push 8 amps. So if this is at like 0 or 10% state of charge, then it will charge at full speed but around 32% it doesn't, and it will decrease the higher the state of charge. So yeah, I think to expect 170 watts for a charge rate is fair, which is around six to seven hours. But because sun can be unpredictable, I would absolutely over panel this with like 200 watts of solar panels, and it would take about one to two days to recharge it. Oh, a, nine, oh, a thousand watts, you guys. Oh, this is weird. Look at this, 800, and then it dropped to 400. That was strange. I've never seen that before on a Jackery. So I noticed there's a lag time on this shunt. It takes like 20 seconds or so until you get accurate numbers. See, I just turned this off, and it jumped to 740 watts, but we only have 400 watts connected right now. So that's really strange. Let's disconnect everything. Look it. It takes a while. Let's see how long it will take. Guys, it's been like 30 seconds and it still isn't changing. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's some serious lag time on this power meter. So it is accurate, but it takes like 30 seconds until you have a good number. Now let's check the voltage of the DC receptacle. And the voltage output is 13.3 volts, which is nice because we're at a low state of charge. So this is the perfect time to test it when it actually matters. Let's compare it to the other Jackeries. We've got 13.3, so it's the same. And this one's at a low state of charge as well. Now let's figure out the inverter efficiency because I think this matters a lot when you have a smaller system like this. And this is a more consistent load than the heat gun. The heat gun can fluctuate quite a bit. And 398 divided by 414 is 96% efficiency, which is absolutely incredible. 
And let's just disconnect the input and see if it changes it. And it does change it. Look at that, guys. So this is actually the output of the AC receptacle. So I can't actually calculate the inverter efficiency unless I did a full capacity test with the watt hour capacity rating versus the AC output. So that means it is not 96% efficient. Now what we're gonna do is see what it favors more, AC charging or solar panel power. It's actually preferring the AC charging method, but we're only getting 164 watts. So let's disconnect this and see what the amperage is on this one. Look at that, 176 watts. So yeah, you can charge faster with the solar input, but it does seem to favor the AC charging. Let's plug this one in one more time. Look at that, it switches over to this one. So it does favor this side. Even if it charges slower, it favors this input. That's pretty interesting. And I just disconnected the Anderson and put it back in and it still does not favor it. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting little test, huh? So now we're gonna charge it up and do a quick capacity test. Now the Jackery is fully charged and it took a long time. It trickle charged for like another hour. We're gonna pull 200 watts for like five hours to get an accurate assessment of the capacity. And the numbers will fluctuate over here, but the kilowatt hour counter will give us an accurate assessment. So we'll come back in a few hours and see what numbers we get. Also, when I do these tests, I have a security Wi-Fi camera and I stick it in front of the meter and I can see it when I'm not home. So I'm gonna go to lunch right now and I can watch it when I'm gone. So isn't that great? So the total we measured was 830 watt hours divided by the total capacity and you get 82% for the inverter efficiency, which is pretty typical. And Jackery's always pull full capacity. So I bet it actually pulled further than what it's rated for, but the inverter efficiency is probably like 80%. Now that we've done our testing, let's talk about if you should actually buy this model. So this model in particular, I'm not a big fan of. Even though I like Jackery and these are very durable and I've taken these apart, put them back together again and ran them for years and they're great units, I think that this one is underpowered for the cost. If this came out like a year ago, I think people would go crazy. But now there are better options for almost the same price. For example, the EcoFlow Delta. This charges in one to two hours. This takes five to seven hours to charge. There is like no comparison and this one's only a couple hundred dollars more. If you're spending a thousand dollars and you can get this one instead with almost double the inverter output and one fifth the charge time, why would you buy this one? And I like Jackery, I really do. But compared to this, I would go for this. If I'm spending my hard earned money, I would go for this for sure. Also, the input voltage is only 30 volts. This one's 60. Okay, you can string your panels. If you're using this for like an RV or a van, I would not use this. I would use this one instead for sure. You can connect 400 watts to this. This can only handle 170 watts max if that's available. So you, if you connect 200 watts, that's all you're gonna be getting. There's also the Blue Eddy. This thing can handle 500 or even 600 watts of solar panel input, and the new one can handle like 65 volts of input. So this thing can charge like way faster than this with solar, and it's faster than this one too, and the cells that are used in this are very high quality. I think the number one selling point that the Jackery has is that it's lightweight. This thing is only 22 pounds. This one's 30 pounds. This is actually the 2.4 kilowatt hour model, but the smaller one is like 30 pounds as well. So I think the biggest selling point is the weight, but everything else is just very limited. Also, when Jackery came out with a regulated output, we were like, oh wow, that's amazing. But now all of them have it, so it's not that special anymore. And all of these have quick charge and USB-C. They all have receptacles on the back for the AC output. Um, this one has six receptacles, this one only has three. This one has two on the back, but this can only handle a thousand watts. This one's great for long-term use, but the inverter output is horrible. But yeah, EcoFlow Delta it has everything, and it's only a little bit more than this. I think if this Jackery was only $700, people would go crazy for it. That would be a perfect price point. But for $1,000, I wouldn't spend my money on it, personally. 
But I must mention that Jackery has better customer service than EcoFlow Delta. Um, and also this one's great for long-term use. The EcoFlow Delta has its own problems, which you can watch out my other video, but it's a good unit anyways. These are more for like camping. If you want an actual solar power system, even though this one's underrated, this one will last a very long time for charge cycle life. The charge cycle life for this one's not that great. Also, this is sponsored by all of these companies. These were all sent out for me to test and review. And that's pretty much it. I was actually pretty bummed about the input the most because everybody complains about how slow Jackery charges. I wish they could just put like 300 watts. That would make everyone's life better. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.